Raymond, Peter, Longo now joins us live. Good Tuesday to you, sir. Raging Al Iaquinta. Wow. Wow. Come on, who doesn't love to see this kid fight? I'm telling you, I said before you came on the air, I have a hard time when I'm not working staying up for these main cards on the Eastern time zone, you know, till 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. I stayed awake for Raging Al. He was literally what was keeping me awake, and, and I'm glad I stayed up for it, obviously. I tell you, he delivers. I mean, you got look two co-main events, two knockouts. I mean, uh, he's got some gripes. I'm not saying he's going about it in the right way, but I tell you what, man, he he delivers. He really delivers, man. And that kid's a fighter. Period. He's going to go for it. And uh, I don't think he's ever been in a dull fight. I really don't. You know, so uh, like again, I, I feel for him because I think he should be making some money. You know. Hey, Ray, you know, um, it was an amazing performance, man. It looked like he didn't take any time off at all. He was very composed. And, and let's talk about that. You know, obviously, yeah. I think that um, he deserves to be paid. He's an exciting fighter. Uh, he always brings it. You know, what do you think about, the, you know, the things that he said, you know, a- after the fight? You know, And Matt, I know Matt, obviously, is, is close to, to Dana, obviously, um, one of uh, Al's coaches. What does he think about all this? Yeah, look, man. I mean, look, we train him. We love him. Uh, We definitely don't agree with the way he goes about certain things. I think, you know, he is who he is. He's an individual and, you know, definitely not his father. But, uh, you know, my my concern is that he goes in there and he fights. And I think that's where the the, 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 the problem comes. It's like, you know, Kenny, you've been in those fighter meetings. I mean, he's doing exactly what Dana's saying to do. He's going out, yeah. and he's not leaving it to the judges. And then to not get rewarded for that, you got to feel the guy's frustration a little bit. Right. You know what I mean? And I don't know who's coming up with the bonuses and all of that stuff, but he does produce. I, I think that's where I have the problem. So, you know, I, I definitely don't agree with, you know, the way he goes about doing some of the stuff, but I think it's just you're seeing like a really totally frustrated kid out there. And, then, you know, he's not the most comfortable guy with the mic. And then I just think it gets, you know, skyrocket, you know, it skyrockets out of control or it spirals out of control. And I mean, he's really a, like a great kid. He's all, everybody loves yeah. this kid, but I think it's like, you know, I, I, look, I didn't add to it. You know what I mean? Like after the fight, I'm like, dude, you just got, you know, the bonus. So the, you know, I think it, he's like, you say right. that all the time. I go, no, but this time, you know, <laughs> you're the co-main event, you know, you did something that nobody really has done before like that. Uh, you know, a legend in the sport and all of that. Nothing. And then I think he just goes nuts, you know. And hey. I'm not really with him at that point. So, you know, I'm not there to reel him in. But, uh, you know, like him, not like him, he comes to freaking fight this kid, man. He huh. really does. It, 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 and he it can't puts be, on a it show can't be and denied, man. I don't it know. I wish denied, they'd man. just get behind him and build him up and do something. I don't know. Do, do you think this is something that is going to happen? What do you think the, the chances are at this point, percentage-wise, uh, if you can, uh, that he's going to get re-signed? Uh, you know, look, look, I have a business, right? I don't want to be told how to run my business, to be honest with you. So, look, Dana's, Dana's running the business. He's going to do what he's going to do. You know what I mean? But I think if Al could make them money and they, they see that, then they'll, they'll work with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure... Uh, you know, it's like, again, it's a business like anything else. And, uh, you know, maybe it plays into the future for everybody making a lot of money. Who knows? You know, but uh, I don't know what they're going to do. I've, obviously, right now, they're definitely not happy. So we'll uh, we'll wait and see. But, I mean, he is, he is an exciting fighter. And, again, I think he does exactly what they tell him to do. He doesn't leave it in the hands of the judges. And he puts on the show. And that's, again, that's, that's my dilemma with everything is I just – would love to see the guy get rewarded for that. There's no denying when that octagon door closes, he does his job in terms of what promotionally they would like a fighter to do as well as anybody on the roster and has, you know, obviously for much of his UFC career, there was the last two years of inactivity due to the knee injury. But as far as you know, he is bonus eligible. There are some reports out there that maybe he's not eligible to, to receive a bonus. But as far as you know, he is eligible to receive performance bonuses. Yes. Wait, that's as far as I know, but I really, okay. Okay. I didn't even, I didn't know it the first time. So I, I've never okay. really talked to him, but he didn't say that when I said, yeah, I think you're getting a bonus this time. He didn't say I'm not eligible. So I'm assuming that's all good, but I, I, I really don't have the 
I'm not 100 percent sure of that. No. So we were we were talking before you came on about how do you quantify Ally Quinta's value to the UFC? Because gosh, I mean, as a fighter, he does everything you'd like him to do, and and has an infectious way about him, and and even the whole raging Al thing. I mean, the raging Al thing. There's a huge angle there. I guess here at lightweight, though, he's number 14 in the world. So I think the the best way for him to make money, if if the knee and everything else can hold up, right, would be to to stay active and try i know it's easier said than done right but to try to to get a big fight quickly against somebody in the top 10 and work his way into these bigger fights that command bigger dollars yes yeah. uh yeah well you know i think he was well he was ranked in the top 10 i think at one point he, they pushed him back because of the inactivity but i think he was he was up there i mean he's got a pretty good highlight reel if you look at it you know right, right no, he now he might be uh, in the top 10 once they yeah, you know it's week, just it's yeah. hard to stay active when you think you're getting cheated you know that that's that's the dilemma for him is that you know, when it's all said and done and he's paying taxes and his training camps, he's not coming out of there with a lot of money, you know. And he has, uh, you know, he's got a sizable amount of fights, I think, in the UFC now. I mean, look, like, again, it's a business. I promote fights, you know, I'm co-owner with Lou Negley in the ring of combat. So I get Dana's point. Don't You know, I'm on both sides of the fence with that. I have to deal with fighters and... You know, I, I get it. You know what I mean? And, he, you know, Dana's going to do what he thinks is best for, for and, and his you, company. And that's, that's Ray, perfect, man. That's fine. Ray, do you, think, do you think they maybe see him as a liability because of his knee injury as well, that may, maybe he, he might not be as reliable? Uh, they could, you know. I'm sure they're looking at, like, a Cain Velasquez in the same way. You know, you're not sure what's going to happen with him. He's been injury-plagued, and injuries are a huge part of this this whole promotion now, I mean, it's, it's tough to stay healthy as you get a little older, but, uh, yeah, I, I guess they, you know, they analyze everything. Well, he's won five in a row four of them by knockout or TKO, none bigger than this last one against Diego Sanchez. I'm really excited for the future. You got Kiesa and Kevin Lee, I think coming up in a main event in June. Um, you know, those guys at least right now are ranked above him, but I mean, Ray, there's no denying He's got a big fight coming up next. I don't know how many fights he has left or the exact length of his contract, but uh, hopefully they can come to terms because I feel like this yeah. would be somebody that Dana Dana would really like as a fighter. I know you guys have a very close relationship with Dana, you and your team, and Matt and everybody yeah. else, so hopefully uh, everything works out and this guy's headlining a card here in three or four months. Yeah. You know. And you got to remember, the only guy he didn't finish was, was Jorge Masvidal, who's an yes. absolute killer. He's he might a fight freaking for the, killer, the belt and Masvidal had him in trouble Maya. in the first round. Yeah. And this kid battled his way back. Whether you agree with the score, you don't agree with the score, that kid was fighting, he was going forward, and that's the, against a guy that's been dismantling people. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, like, again, when you look at Al, yeah, he didn't finish Masvidal, but not many guys can say they did that. You know what I mean? And he's only going to get better and better, Jorge, so... I don't know. I like. I look at that as one of his better fights, even though he didn't finish it because of the talent that Masvidal had. You know what I mean? So it's not like the quantity of opponents; it's the quality. And Masvidal, I really, I didn't realize how good he was until that fight. And I was like, "Well, this kid is, he's oh, good." And I know he's, he he tortured himself to make the weight. That's why I think he's more successful at 170. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's it, it's kind of frustrating because. You know, I wish he would have handled it a little different because he had such a great victory, and to kind of throw it away with some of the other stuff is is a shame to me. But I, I hope it all pays off in the end. I hope there's a method for the madness, and everybody comes to you know an agreement. And you know, like again, if Dana was to meet this guy, you know, head on, he's going to love this kid. He really is. He's going to love him. Is the the guy's a 100%. really good guy? But you get him in those spots. <laughs> it's a, it's rough, man. I tell you. It is rough, I don't know. But, that, know I don't know that the comments are going to be held against him. I guess just for me, and this is partially me playing devil's advocate. I'd love to hear him crack a mic and say, "Give me Edson Barboza, give me Michael Johnson. I'm better than guys ranked five and six in the world. Like, give me the Kiesa Lee winner. Although maybe that fight doesn't yeah. make sense, you know. Call, give me the Alvarez Poirier winner. Just you know, match make yourself moving forward here at 155 pounds because I think there are a lot of favorable fights and and big fights out there for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I agree with you on that, but. uh like, again, I don't think he's the most comfortable guy when that mic is in front of him. You could even see with Brian Stan trying to reel him in. He was all over the place. <laughs> so, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I think that's uh, an area maybe he has to work on, you know, you know, speaking and getting comfortable and, uh, 
you know, being able to express himself in the right way because I think that's where the frustration is. And then when he can, he just reverts back to, you know, going getting a Breaking little out. wacky. But, you know, like, again, my, my thing with him is how his performance is, and I, right. I can't ask for anything better from a fighter than what this kid does. I can't, you know, and that's, that's the frustrating part. I'd like to see him rewarded for what he's supposed to be doing not for uh, anything that's uh, pre- or post-fight stuff. You know, when he gets in there, you know, he's always in an exciting fight. He goes, Kenny, you notice, he goes to finish fights. He's not in there to dance around. He's going to fight. Yeah, and I don't know, man. I just would love to see the kid get rewarded just like everybody else. I've heard you and Matt Sarah gush about Iaquinta for years, not unlike the way you would gush about Chris Weidman, and you're right, just physically and mentally tough as anything and obviously has the skills as well. And you're right, ultimately, you, Ray, you're focused on the performance, and it was essentially flawless over the weekend. So congrats on that. You, you, you could have charged a premium these last three weeks with these interviews. I mean, a huge, crazy three-week stretch for you guys. You got the Weidman controversy, big win for Aljamain Sterling, huge win for Ally Aquinta. I mean, so do you get a week off? I mean, what, what, what uh, You know what? I thought this? I had fights this week, and I was just informed yesterday they got pushed at May 6th. Thank God. Yes. I got to tell you, man, sitting in that locker room, um, I, I was telling Matt, I go, dude, I'm actually feeling this, man. I mean, I'm really feeling like I was, you know, I was I was exhausted. It was That was a tough, tough three weeks, just emotionally getting up for each guy. The controversy, right. that created a whole other set of problems with uh, – you know, people being pissed off at you and all of that shit. So it was a it was a crazy three weeks. So yeah, I'm, you know, I missed my traveling partner, your buddy Jimmy. I missed him on the last trip. Ah, I mean, we, yes. We, we've been through some crazy times on the airplanes, and uh, I decided to fly American for some reason. So you know, whatever. But nutty, nutty, nutty time. I mean, three weeks. That was crazy. And I know people. I don't know how you guys do it when you travel and even to you know announce fights, but just. Imagine having to get up and emotionally be there for everybody. is is It's tough, man. No, oh, no doubt about it. And that is, by the way, Jimmy Stewart, uh, Anakin Florian podcast listener, one of our production guys. He's, he's a Delta yeah, what a, guy, what a, so that's what a why you What a great guy, man. What a really, really super nice dude. Yeah, 100%. Well, hey, congrats, you know, two and one on the three-week stretch, and then certainly the loss may be still pending. So enjoy the week off and uh we'll bug you next monday i'm sure about something but thank you for your time as always and please send al our best we weren't going to bug him today but certainly would like to uh give him a hot mic in the future and just let him rip so i mean if you want him on next week let me know i'll grab him on